Good morning. We welcome you to our services here at Faith Baptist Church. Certainly enjoy the fellowship that we're experiencing, but we're going to come together. Invite you to turn to page 20 this morning. Page 20, the text may be a little bit new to you, but the song, the tune is very familiar. We praise thee, O God, our Redeemer, number 20, sung to the tune of We Gather Together. Number 20. We praise thee, O God, our Redeemer, Creator, in grateful devotion our tribute we bring. We lay it before thee, we kneel and adore thee. We bless thy holy name and glad praises we sing. We worship thee, God of our fathers. We bless thee through life, storm, and tempest. Our guide hast thou been. When perils o'ertake us, escape thou will make us. And with thy help, O Lord, our battles we win. With voices united, our praises we offer to Thee, great Jehovah, glad anthems we raise. Thy strong arm will guide us, our God is beside us, to Thee, our great Redeemer, forever we pray. Amen. And then just over 10 pages to number 30. And you may find this hard to believe, but this is one I don't know. I do know the chorus, but I don't know the verse all that well. So I'm going to ask Lynn to play it through one time. Try this one together. Bless the Lord and sing his praises. Bless the Lord now, O oh my soul. Join the song all heaven raises. Let the anthem loudly roll. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord for love victorious, love that conquered on the tree. For his grace so great and glorious, flowing out from Calvary. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy. We'll just slow it down a little bit so I can catch up, okay? I'm running out of breath. Maybe some of the rest of you. Just a little slower on the third stanza. Bless the Lord, he walks beside me, and he lights the path before. Every need is now supplied me from his bounteous heavenly shore. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord for truth, voice given, 
for the word of prophecy that has drawn the veil from heaven and revealed my destiny. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless His holy name. Amen. Good to see you this morning. Thank you for coming. We're looking forward to what the Lord has for us today. After revival last week, I always hate following up a preacher <coughs> who preaches very well. Amen. But uh, we appreciate Brother Darrell. He was a blessing to us. Uh, I brought him to the airport for 5 o'clock on Thursday morning, and he didn't actually fly out until 1.20. Oh. So he sat at the airport for eight hours. They kept canceling his flight, or not canceling him, but delaying his flight. It was supposed to go at 625. They gave him an email message at about 530 saying the flight had been delayed till 1020. And he said, well, you know, that's not so bad. I called and talked to him. I said, you want me to come pick you up? He said, no, I've gone through security. I don't want to leave. So anyway, later on, about 12, uh, 10, just before 1020, another message, your flight's delayed till 1220. And then finally a 120, and they actually put him on the plane, and he got home. So he sat there for eight hours, and uh, I told him, I said, it must be the Lord wanted you to sit and think for a while. Amen. Anyway, it was a blessing to have him here, and he's home safe with his wife. And so please pray for him and his wife, uh, just uh, that the Lord would uh, undertake for her, because she has a lot of illness issues. And so please just pray for her if you would. So let's pray today and ask the Lord to help us as we have our service. Father, thank you for our time this morning. We thank you, Father, for all that you do for us each and every day. Father, we could not be here this morning if you had not allowed us to come. And we know that uh, everyone that's here this morning has come by divine appointment. And we're looking forward to what you have for us this morning, Father. And just as we have our services, we want to glorify you with all that is said and done. And Father, we're looking for... Uh, great things to come in the future as you bless our church and uh, bless the ministries here, Father. We're just asking that we might be humble servants for thee. Have your way in our hearts this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. To Live or Die, our song for the month of August. To Live or Die. Live is Christ, I long to spend my might and time to worship Him. I'll give my all for Him who died to bring a rebel to His side. Lord, help me use my fleeting breath to honor You through life or death. And when my heart drums its last beat, I'll lay my labors at your feet. To die is Christ's eternal gain, to wake and never sleep again. I will not fear, O oh grave, the pathway to my Savior's face. Lord, help me use my fleeting breath to honor you through life or death. And when my heart drums its last beat, I'll lay my labors at your feet. To live or die, it's all the same. For Christ consumes me either way. If I should live, I'll live for Him. And if I die, I'll live again. Lord, help me use my fleeting breath to honor You through life or death. And when my heart drums its last beat, I'll lay my labors at your feet. Amen. Have Michael and Benjamin come. And 
receive our offering this morning. Just a couple of prayer requests I need to make mention of to you. Uh, pray for a young lady named Amy. That is a relative of Dots. Uh, she's been dealing recently with some demonic activity in her life. So please lift up Amy, if you would, that the old devil would flee from her and she could be uh, victorious in her uh, Christian life. Also pray for Arlene. That's Dot's uh, sister. She's still healing from her, uh, her surgery and her stroke. And so please lift her up if you would. Pray for Pastor Ben uh, down there in Florida. He is recovering from COVID. He did have a negative COVID test, so he's free of the virus apparently, but he's still battling with the side effects of the, of the virus. Uh, just kind of wipe some folks out and he's in that camp right now. So please lift him up. He's struggling a little bit with just getting back up on his feet. And then also pray for uh, Pastor Ensley. He is the missionary church planner, the friend of mine in Wyoming. He was down with COVID last week, and uh, but he's now home and feeling better. And so please pray for him as well for his healing. He'll probably be out of the pulpit for at least this Wednesday, the following Sunday, and maybe the following Wednesday. Uh, just uh, just taking a toll on him as well. Also pray for Brother Weed. I talked to Roberta yesterday, and uh, Brother Weed is still uh, still battling with his health issues. Uh, he had to cancel his dialysis appointment for Saturday because of a sore throat and uh, coughing and uh, such. So I don't know all that happened. I, I don't know all that that's causing that, but just pray for Brother Weed that uh, he would be healed. Uh, and the Lord would be done in his, uh, his Lord's will would be done in his life. And so lift those folks up if you would. Michael, would you ask a blessing on the offering? Dear Lord, bless the rest of the service of the pastor of the Lord. Please call the people that help this year. And some are going to keep going. Please bless the offering. Amen. Turn to number 67. So this is going to be another new song. I hope it becomes a favorite of the church family here. Didn't know what Brother Dave was going to speak in Sunday school this morning. Didn't even know who was speaking in Sunday school this morning. But he talked about foundations. And the chorus is, how can it be, how can it be that God should love a soul like me? I'm going to ask Lynn to play it through one time while you're seated. And uh, then we'll sing it. Number 67. Shall we stand as we sing number 67? Oh, Savior, as my eyes behold the wonders of thy might untold, 
The heavens in glorious light arrayed, the vast creation thou hast made. And yet to think thou lovest me, my heart cries out, how can it be? That God should love a soul like me. Oh, how can it be? As at the cross I humbly bow and gaze upon thy thorn crown bow and view the precious bleeding form by cruel nails so bruised and torn. Knowing thy suffering was for me in grief I say, how can it be? How can it be? How can it be? That God should love a soul like me. Oh, how can it be? How can it be? How can it be? Was ever grace so full and free from heights of bliss? Woe in loving kindness thou didst go from sin and shame to rescue me. Oh, love divine, how can it be? How can it be? How can it be that God should love a soul like me? Oh, how can it be? Amen. Amen. You may be seated. 1 Corinthians chapter number 3 this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. Once again, thank you for coming and it's good to see you this morning. I believe the Lord has something for each of us this morning and looking forward to what He is going to do in our hearts as we look into His Word. Have you ever noticed that when you pick up a new puppy, it will often squirm and wiggle, try to get free? Amen? You ever had that happen? What about this? How about a young toddler being held in her her, his mother's arms, and I don't mean that politically correct, by the way. Uh, they go through all sorts of contortions trying to get free. A toddler likes to be free to go and explore and do all those things. Recently, when my one-year-old granddaughter was with us, we had to place objects in certain places so that she couldn't get to certain things because she was always looking to get to a place where we weren't. And so we uh, set up the living room in a, such a way that we kind of child-proofed it, if you will, and every time we turn our back, she was trying to get over the barrier or around it or something. What is this desire that we humans have to be loose and free? Some have said it's appalling. It's an appalling thing not to be free. Whole nations that were once free are now locked in by a vicious, overbearing dictator. Right here in our own country, we see immigrants coming to America so that they can enjoy the freedoms that we've enjoyed for a long time, fleeing the oppression of their overbearing governments and etc. But yet in our country today, we have ignorant people who are pressuring and advocating for the same systems of government that those immigrants are trying to flee from because they don't understand what happens when you give man too much power over your day-to-day -day lives. But why do families desire a financial, uh, financial freedom and the minute that they achieve it, it brings their ruin? 
Why do teenagers feel cramped and restricted by rules and ethics of their parents who in their minds are continually saying, don't do this, don't do that. Yet the moment their freedom is given, it becomes the exact thing that wrecks their life going forward. One writer said it this way, we win liberty and then work our own death by means of it. After all, the whole world lies before us. Amen. The Apostle Paul made this statement in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 21. He said, all things are yours. But the whole verse says, therefore, let no man glory in men for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come. All are yours and ye are Christ and Christ is God's. When Paul was trying to teach the Corinthian Christians the meaning of this verse, when he made that statement, he, he was trying to re, remind them that liberty was not born an only child. Liberty was born with a twin called loyalty. The title of my message this morning is Interdependent Twins, Liberty and Loyalty. You know, the Apostle Paul was a preacher of freedom. For he preached a message of good news. And in that liberty of the good news, that can only truly come when we are wholly given to Christ. Wherever the gospel was preached and believed by the multitudes, freedom was the fruit. Freedom from rituals and rules, freedom from man's religious dogmas, freedom from race, freedom from financial boundaries, freedom from all things where men are labeled and generalized into a certain group. But Paul said in our text this morning, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come. However, the verse did not stop there. It went on to say, all are yours, and ye are Christ's, and Christ is God's. Many times reading our Bible, we have a habit as Christians to only take the easy part of the text and claim it as our own. Without reading the entire text or reading the context of which it's given. So what belongs to us is joined together with who we belong to. Our problem is we try to get the first half, liberty, without applying also the second half of the verse, which talks about loyalty. We struggle for our personal freedom at the same time, forget who it was who made it possible. None of us this morning would be here and free in Christ if it had not been for God's grace. Liberty is always desirable, yet it is loyalty that seems too ever demanding for us sometimes. We would prefer to rip Paul's text in two and have the first part without being responsible for the second part. But with the scriptures, we can't do that. We must take the scriptures as they are. It would be a great joy to most people for God to say, all things are yours and stop there. However, Paul goes on and says, and ye are Christ's and Christ is God's. That changes everything. That changes everything about what Paul said. It now becomes a serious responsibility to be in Christ. Today in our world, most of the social and moral ills that our society face comes from a neglect of this double-edged principle, which says in order for liberty to be successful, it must be joined with loyalty. Counselors and pastors all over the country are constantly facing the sorry results of this kind of one-sided living, seeking liberty without loyalty. Some people figure out that this one-sided free living eventually loses its luster, and it surely will. If you simply try to live free without any accountability, without any responsibility to anyone or anything, that freedom that you enjoy will lose its luster. They discover that they must continue repeating the same old things that bring them what they think is freedom and happiness, only to find out they have to keep it up unless they're going to lose it. Someone once said, how many drunks have figured out that there are only two stages in the life of a person given to strong drink? 
Number one, when he could stop if he would. But number two, when he would stop if he could. Those are the only two phases in a drunk's life that he faces. When he can stop drinking, but then he decides he wants to stop, he can't because he's just given to the drink. You know, liberty alone is not a rallying principle. It does not draw people together. Freedom does not draw, pre draw people together. It's only a part of a principle that God puts in his word where Paul said, all are yours. Freedom is never free. It brings a serious responsibility. It brings nothing together. Quite frankly, it does just the opposite. Freedom often divides people. God designed us so that we were made with a need to have liberty, yes, but not without loyalty. Liberty and loyalty are forever inter interdependent twins. This was the problem Paul faced in his missionary journeys when he was spreading that good news, he constantly was across, coming across those that wanted freedom, but yet wanted no responsibility with it. He was successful at breaking through many of the moral and ritual prohibitions that men were saddled with, but Paul's message was clear and concise. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That's first, uh, 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 17. Paul made it clear you can't have one without the other. It was clear throughout the scriptures, this message of liberty and loyalty has been tampered with throughout history. It's continuing to be tampered with even today as we stand here this morning and we look across our country. There's a great call for freedom, but yet the same ones calling for freedom are the same ones trying to saddle us with all kinds of other things that they have not paid for, they have not given uh, anything to. It's been reversed in many of places, thinking that loyalty can bring liberty. But no, liberty brings with it freedom, but only when it's coupled together with loyalty. In order to have true liberty, we must first understand and embrace loyalty to Christ. That is the crux of the matter. Today in Christianity, everybody wants to do their own thing. They want to do their own thing apart from this book. They say things like, well, we all serve the same God. We're all serving the same God. It doesn't matter what Bible I use. It doesn't matter what I do. I can do what I want because God has given me freedom. He has given us freedom. He has given us a free will to choose. But let me just say this. It has to be when our spirit and our mind are rooted in Christ and his word. In America today, mobs are ruling in many major cities. Why is this? Because these mobs are at their core self-centered. Loyal to no one. Loyal to no authority. The people there in those mobs want to be able to tell everyone else what they can and cannot do. And as a matter of fact, if you look at this closely, you'll find that you can't even disagree you can't even disagree. If you try disagreeing with these mobs, they will ch turn violence on you. And it's, we're seeing it over and over again in America today. This is why those who are crying for liberty simply want their supposed rights, and at the same time wanting no responsibility and pledging loyalty to no one. Can I say to you this morning, that will not be successful. Because God ingrained in us the spirit to have a free life, to have a free will, but he coupled it together with loyalty to Christ. The only way it can be successful is if it's together with Christ. Chapter 8 of Acts, if you turn there with me, we see a Bible example of what I'm talking about. Acts chapter number 8. Acts chapter number 8, look with me at verse number 5. Familiar passage of Scripture. Here the gospel is being proclaimed in Samaria. And in verse 5 the Bible says, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies and 
uh, and that were, uh, were lame were healed. And there was a great joy in the city. We'll just hold our finger right there just for a second. Whenever Christ is proclaimed, whenever Christ is followed, whenever Christ is set as our example, it will bring joy to our lives. Verse 9, But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery, and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. Verse 11, And to him that him they gave, uh, excuse me, and to him they had regard because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip's preaching, the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. And then Simon himself believed also, and then he was baptized. He continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw, listen, when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Here we see a problem. Simon was misguided in his thinking. He was misguided in his approach. He had been a big man on campus, if you will, for a long time. He liked the publicity. He liked the fact that people looked to him as some great one. And now all of a sudden, here comes the simple message of the Lord Jesus Christ. And people are beginning to be saved and baptized. And John and Peter come and, and sort of authenticate, if you will, what's happening. But this man, Simon, he says in verse uh, 19, give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. You know, today, many want everything for free. We are in a society today who has their hand out. They want things for free. But most often they're willing to give nothing in return. That is not the Bible way. Free without responsibility, earning nothing, yet wanting everything. This man Simon saw that he could get something extra, and he offered to pay money for this gift. But Peter quickly told him, in verse 20, Thy money perish with thee. In other words, Peter's saying, hey, take your money to your grave. It's not going to do you any good in the things of God. God doesn't need our money. God needs our loyalty. God needs our loyalty. He needs us to be focused, to be given, to be uh, 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 one with Christ, one in spirit in all things of life. Verse 21, Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. There is the problem. We have many today who sit in churches all over America, but their heart is not right with God because they've never given their loyalty to the things of God. They've simply escaped hellfire with some profession that they didn't even mean, didn't even understand, they think. And there's never been loyalty in their life. Liberty alone stresses independence. My personal freedom. But when you put it together with loyalty, it talks about interdependence and dependence. And independence without recognition of the fact that you're dependent on loyalty is only a delusion. That by simple definition is liberty without loyalty. It will never work. This local church will never prosper. If we as faithful Christians harbor a spirit of independence. You know there's some folks that just don't want to be a team. They have to do everything on their own. You ask them for help, they try to say, no, I don't need any help, I want to do it myself. Well, that's all well and good at some things, but I'm just telling you, as a church, we must work together. 
And we must understand that everyone here is an important part of the body of Christ. If you're saved, you're part of the church. That's what the Bible says. And we fuss and argue over silly things many times. But the Bible says, if you're born again into the family of God, you are a part of the church. We have to be dependent on God and His Word. There's no superstars at Faith Baptist Church. There's nobody in this church that this church cannot go on without. You better put that in your mindset and hold on to it because it's true. This church does not depend on this preacher. It doesn't depend on any member. It depends on the fact that we as Christians are loyal to Jesus Christ and His Word. The only people here at Faith Baptist Church are blood-washed sinners saved by grace. And thank God for that. Where would we be? Where would we be without God's grace? You see, none of us deserve what we have. If we had to give account for ourselves on a 24-hour, 365-day-a-year basis in order to have God's blessing, guess what would happen? None of us would have God's blessing. But God is long-suffering. He's full of grace and mercy. And it's that grace and mercy that saved us and put us on a place fit for heaven. Not because of us, but because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul preached that all things are yours provided you remain loyal to Christ. Brother Hayes said this past week in one of his messages, sometimes... God requires certain things of us. Sometimes God will come to us and he'll say, hey, I need that. I need you to give me that. What are those things he asks for? Sometimes it's things that are in our life that should not be there. They may not be sinful in and of themselves, but we've made them sin because of the way we've dealt with them. The way we've handled them. Sometimes it's a person. Sometimes it's a habit, sometimes it's recreation, sometimes it might be a financial thing, but sometimes God says, give me that. And if we're not willing to give it to Him and trust Him, like Brother Hayes said this past week, our growth stops right there. God will not continue to give us things if we refuse to be loyal. Paul said that all things are yours provided that you remain loyal to Christ. We are first Christians, not Methodists, not Baptists, not Catholics, not Episcopalians or any other thing. We're first Christians. We must first be Christ before we can be anything else successfully. You know, our Constitution gives us liberty as long as we remain loyal to each other and to our God. That was the Founding Fathers' principle that they ingrained when they, writ they wrote the document. We must remain loyal to our founders. Remo loyal to the principles that they gave us under the inspiration, I believe, of God. This time-tested principle remains true even today. Nothing that we own can save us. You can't be saved by your house. You can't be saved by your kids. You can't be saved by your money. Nothing we own can save us. Only Christ can do that. More importantly, who we belong to is more important. And that is really the pressing matter that's before us this morning. Who do you belong to? The Bible says that we're bought with a price. Therefore, therefore glorify God in your body. We are living in a time like never before. Where voices everywhere are telling the ignorant of our land that all is yours. Without telling him the rest of the story. We have politicians who tell everybody all the time that this can be free and that can be free. And I say this, someone has to pay. Someone has to pay for all these free things that are being given around. The Bible says, and ye are Christ's. When we allow ourselves to be mastered by things without having mastery over them, this is a dangerous place to be. We never want things to be our guide or our 
authority. We want Christ to be in that place. Until we belong morally, socially, and in all other areas of our existence to Christ, nothing we own or call our own will be much of a benefit to us. Looseness and liberty is not really much of a life at all. But yet that's the way most people live. Looseness and liberty. Give me what I want. Let me do what I want. Let me be free. And I don't want anyone telling me what to do. That's not much of a life at all. When we think back to the greatest hour of our life, when we think back in your own personal life just for a minute, think back to a time in your life What was it that provided you the greatest happiness or the greatest joy? Well, I trust most of you would testify that it was the day you were saved. But there's other times in our life where we had great joy. Maybe it was a special place that you used to go to that you enjoyed. Maybe it was a special person to love or to cherish till death do you part. I hope that's part of it. But please remember, it is our loyalties that make life worth living. Being loyal to Christ first, loyal to our families, a loyal husband to your wife, wife to your husband, father and mother to their children. Loyalty. Think of a mother with child. She belongs to that child, and the child is part of her. They're loyal to each other. One cannot be without the other. While the woman is carrying the child. That child after birth calls for her attention. But then without explanation the child dies. Now she is free again. And once again has her personal liberty. The voice of her child calling no more makes her run to her child's side. But now she is heartbroken. Even with her found, newfound freedom... This new liberty now becomes the heaviest burden of all. If the child could be given back, she would once again feel that the old sense of belonging would be there again. Then she would truly feel that she is free and her old self would also return. The only liberty worth having is founded upon loyalty. Let me close with this question. Are you truly free this morning? If you were to examine your life and ask yourself tough questions, are you truly free this morning? Or are you still captive to something? Maybe it's things. Maybe it's a desire for financial gain. Uh, maybe it's a desire for material possessions. Maybe it's some other thing, but are you held captive this morning by something? Maybe it's a root of bitterness. Let me just say this. There's a lot of folks in Christianity that are held captive by a root of bitterness for something that happened 25 years ago that they've not been able to let go of. Some of you here this morning are not truly free. By your own testimony and actions, you're not now and have never been truly free ever since you've been born again. Because you've not been loyal to the things of God. How do I know that? Because I talk with you. I observe. I've told you many times that it's not my responsibility to follow you around and make sure that you're living for Christ. That's your responsibility. But Christians oftentimes are honest to their fault in the sense that they tell people a lot of things that they probably shouldn't say. And I know some of you are not truly free because of your own testimony that you've told to me. You've been attempting to live a life of liberty in Christ, but you've never understood Paul's second half of the verse where it talks about loyalty to Christ. You've never been loyal to the Word of God and completeness in your life. Yes, you've been loyal to it as far as your salvation, but that's where it stopped. And I'm here to tell you this morning that until we get loyal to the whole counsel of the Word of God, applying the principles and the precepts that we learn and applying this principle of liberty and loyalty together, we will never be truly free. 
If you're trying to live a life in liberty in Christ without committing yourself and loyalty to Him, that's a life most miserable. He's the only one that can bring true liberty, but it must always be joined with loyalty to Him. How loyal are you this morning? If you were to grade yourself on a scale of 1 to 10, how loyal are you to this thing of being loyal to Christ, loyal to God's Word, loyal to the directions that He gives to us? Why not make today the day that you truly embrace the inseparable twins of liberty and loyalty before time runs out? God didn't save us for us just to sit on a pew. God saved us to serve. And if you're here this morning and you're not serving God in some capacity, I'm not talking about full-time service. I'm just talking about doing with your gifts what you can to bring others to Christ. If you're sitting this morning and just sulking and souring on the pew, guess what? It does not have to be that way. Everyone here has a gift. If you're here this morning and you're a child of God, God has given each of you a spiritual gift. Why not use it for His glory and His honor? Would you stand with me for prayer? Father in heaven, we thank you this morning for our opportunity to be here at the church house. Father, we know that none of us could be anything without your grace. Father, how many times have we failed miserably when we've attempted to do things because we have freedom to do so? Realizing that we should never be using our liberty as an occasion to sin. But Father, sometimes we find ourselves there. Father, make us mindful this morning of what you want in us, and that is realizing that the liberty that you've given is coupled together with loyalty to Christ. Help us, Father, to use Christ as our example. Help Him to be our guiding principle in everything we do and say. Father, for then we'll be truly free. Help us this morning as we pray in Jesus' name.